All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Miss second by Mrs. Reed. Yes. You're welcome. Yes. Meeting started at 7.50. Um, just a few items in terms of evacuation. Uh, head out right here to the exit sign. Follow me. We have two other exits right behind you. One to the back, one to the side. To the bottom. Okay. At this time, I'd like to welcome Mr. Russ Randazzo that will be presenting the district safety plan. Testing. I'm going to use the mic. Sounds like fans are uh, taking off a plane here. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Good evening to the board um, and good evening to the public. I'm here to talk about the district-wide school safety plan. Um, I'm just going to read off... Uh, couple of points here. The uh, introduction and purpose. The uh, school safety is a job of the entire community. This effort requires leadership coordination by school administration and the involvement and participation from all sectors of the school community. The New York State School District uh, school districts are required to develop a district-wide school safety plan uh, to help school officials identify and respond to uh, potential emergencies. Planning, conducting drills, and participating in exercise with law enforcement, fire emergency officials, and other members of the school community ensure a comprehensive unified approach to emergency response planning. We used uh, local police. It's, uh, the plan was also developed by the uh, state police. The identification of uh, teams. The Bowling Union Free School District wide safety plan was developed in pursuant, can you not hear? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, does that sound better? Sorry about that, everyone. Let me back it up. <laughs> okay, identification. The Bowling Union Free School District uh, Wide Safety Plan was developed uh, pursuant to the Commissioner Regulations 15517, New York State Education Law 2801. Um, school districts are required to develop and maintain a school maintain the district-wide safety plan and building level safety plans. So that's two different plans. Um, they're not totally different from each other, but the district-wide safety plan uh, is up yearly for public review. And the building level safety plans are, um, each individu individual building has a building safety uh, plan that is uh, confidential. There's information in uh, the building level plans that um, re remains confidential and can't, cannot be shared. So the Bolton Union Free School District uh, team consists of uh, representatives uh, from the district uh, community, such as the uh, board members, teachers, local law enforcement officials, local ambulance and emergency response agencies, the fire department, uh, and other representatives. The district safety team is responsible for the overall development, maintenance, and revision of the emergency uh, response plan, and for coordinating training and exercises, uh, exercising the emergency response plan. Team members work closely together to make recommendations for re revising and enhancing the plan. The concept of operation. The concept of an emergency response plan is to execute effective and timely decisions and actions that prevent harm protect lives and property, mitigate damages, restore order, and aid recovery. The district safety team, various agencies and services are involved in responding to incidents, including emergency responders, law enforcement, fire, emergency medical service, mental health, and other community organizations. The training and exercise. The Bolton Union Free School District understands the importance of the training of drills, training, drills, and exercises in being prepared to deal with an incident. Annual training is provided to ensure school personnel and responders are aware of their responsibilities under the district-wide emergency response plan. And that is the district plan. <laughs> so, does anyone have any questions? Uh, 
Um, Mr. Rentazzo, are there any substantive changes from the safety plan from prior years? Yeah, so we had minor changes of name changes. And uh, this, yeah, if, if uh, doc, Dr. Robinson is going to respond on, on another change that we had. Based on the uh, review, uh, there's new regulations out now that talk about uh, districts that have contractors and separating their scope of duties in that contract to ensure that all or any um, student interaction, student discipline matters be handled by administrative staff, not by the security firm. So we've worked through that with uh, our legal firm to um, create um, language in, in this document that separates those two items. So there is a change on page seven and page eight. It's just a few items. It is in the new copy that you just received this evening. It's not in the packet uh, that you had received on Friday as we were still evaluating that language. Any other questions? Report. You have to approve this, correct? Yeah. Okay, so we don't need to approve it now. Okay. Got it. All right, thank you, Mr. Randazzo. Thank you. Appreciate it. At this time, can I get a motion to adjourn and come out of public hearing? Second. Moved by Mrs. Poole. Second. Second by mm -hmm. Mrs. Reed. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Thank you. Second. At this time, I'd like to welcome Chris Reno, who will be presenting our independent audit report. Welcome. Independent external audit report. Hi, I'm Chris Reno, one of the partners of Cullen Danowski, and that's Raul Perez, the supervisor on the engagement. Uh, he met with you back in April when we were commencing this year's audit. Um, then we came back in two phases to do the audit. We did risk assessments in the spring and then came back to do the final numbers in August, late July, August. We're one of the few districts that get the books closed in July, which is really good. You know, most districts, it's like August 15th or later. So, you know, so that's very good. Um, we've issued uh, four, <laughs> four reports. Okay. We had the financial statement. Um, there's a smaller bound, which is a, uh, that better? Uh, extra classroom activity report. And then two letters, uh, which Raul will go over with you in a few minutes. Um, as far as the actual financial statements, there are two reports in here that are issued by us. The first one is on generally accepted auditing standards, um, which uh, is to provide uh, reasonable assurance that the uh, financials are free of material and misstatement. Um, you have an unmodified opinion, which is the cleanest opinion you can have. And also um, in the back, there's another report on generally accepted government auditing standards. Um, where we talk about the internal controls over the financial reporting. Um, if there were findings, you would have something called a significant deficiency or a material weakness. Uh, examples are inadequate capital asset records, closing the books. Um, you don't have any of those, so no significant deficiencies, no material weaknesses. So that's, you know, good clean opinion there. Um, and then, you know, the, the main activity as far as the general fund, you can see is on page 10, you see where you start out with your unassigned fund balance and uh, how you wind up at the end. You know, you, you were over on the revenues, which is good. You were under expended on the budget, which is good. So that build, built it up. Uh, you created this new capital reserve this past year. Um, so you were able to uh, 
almost fully fund the old reserve from 2017 and start working on funding this new reserve and still maintaining 4% of next year's fund balance. So that's good. Okay. Um, I'm going to switch over to him for a few minutes and then uh, we'll have any questions. Sure. Good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Okay. <laughs> uh, I want to take your attention to uh, one of the uh, loose reports. Uh, in it, you will see a, a large, bold font that says our responsibilities on the U.S. generally accepted auditing standards. Does everyone have it? Basically, in our meeting that was required in April with the audit committee, uh, we have to explain to you exactly what our audit procedures are going to entail. This is another required report that, re uh, that also does the same thing. So in it, in the first uh, section of the report, it identifies our responsibility as far as how we conduct the audit. And as Chris has stated before, our responsibility is to render an opinion on the financial statements. Um, uh, as part of our audit, we review your uh, district's internal controls, but in reviewing the district's internal controls, we're not looking to opine on the internal controls. We're just using that as a basis to render audit procedures to uh, conduct our audit. Uh, because the district has uh, expended over $750,000 worth of federal expenditures, uh, we are also required to do what's called a federal single audit. And in that federal single audit, we will uh, review compliance over major uh, programs and render opinion on that. We have not completed that report yet. Uh, the report is not required to be completed until uh, March of 2020. We, we will come back to the district probably around December or January and complete that, those procedures. Uh, let's see here. Uh, also, uh, within the report that Chris will present, there are uh, uh, required supplementary information and other supplementary information within the financial statements. We do not re render an opinion on those, but for the required supplementary information, we do perform limited procedures to make sure there's no gross misstatements. Within the financial statements, we have identified significant uh, uh, estimates. Uh, those estimates have been uh, identified on page three as uh, useful life of, of your capital assets, which is your fixed assets report, your compensated absences liability, which is the accrued sick and vacation time of uh, employees within the district that would have to be paid out upon retirement, uh, actuary assumption methods underlying the OPEB, which is your other post-employment benefits uh, for health insurance benefits for retirees as they, uh, as they retire from the district and their workers' compensations liability, as well as your ERS and TRS net pension liability or asset. During the course of the audit, we did not encounter any difficulties with management. We've always had a very strong working relationship with them. In fact, the district's uh, business office is, is so well put together, they have completed their, their financial statements and their, and their numbers by, by the end of July. So we come in and you're the first district we always enter into and we're, we're completed and we can have this early meeting. Uh, during the course of the audit, we did identify some areas of improvement as far as uh, adjusting the financial statements. If you turn a couple pages, you will see a listing of seven journal entries. In those journal entries, we identified there was either some misclassifications or maybe something that needed to be recognized either within this year or next year. Has anybody had taken the time to review these journal entries? Do you need me to go over them? No, we don't need to go over them. Also, as part of the audit, uh, there was a, a journal entry we proposed, but because of the district's uh, limitations within the accounting program, uh, they, op they opted not to make the entry. The entry was immaterial, and uh, we agree with that. We, uh, we obtained management representations of certain, uh, of certain um, areas within the district on October 2nd, uh, and during the course of the audit, we may uh, have uh, discussions of maybe possible disagreements with certain accounting principles. Uh, during the course of that time, the district may elect to look and uh, offer a consultation from another accountant to see if our interpretation is correct. During the course of the audit, we did not encounter that, and uh, we don't, we're not aware of any, uh, any consultations with other auditors. During uh, the course of the audit, we also, as part of the audit, we, again, look at the, the internal controls over financial processes. We don't render opinion on them, but if sometimes we see areas of improvement, we do um, 
like to bring that to the board's attention to tighten up uh, internal controls to help uh, mitigate and detect fraud. Uh, if you turn to the next loose paper, is there a report on other matters. Again, as Chris has stated, there is no significant deficiencies or material weaknesses within this. This is just for the, uh, the district to improve on internal controls. Has anybody read this and have any uh, questions that you need me to go into this in any detail? Thank you. In terms of the uh, management report, yes, the letter that you provided us in, that has the status of prior year yes. comments. So, one, well, two questions. One is in terms of the IT policy. Yes. You're asking for us to to amend the policy and include specific agencies that we will notify. Yes, in the. Uh, in the New York State Business Law that was uh, uh, amended a few years ago, they identify three specific agencies in, in, in the event of a data breach that you should and require to contact. Although the district's policy does identify that they will contact the appropriate um, agencies, right. uh, agencies, we do recommend as a best business practice to identify those key, key agencies just so if there's any uh, issues that come up, you can say these are the agencies you recommended we contact. These are the agencies we have in our policy. These are the agencies we contacted. Yeah, we have to do this. We have to make an amendment. We just changed because of this. Okay. Oh, thank you. And then another, sorry, Ms. Reed. So to that question about the um, policy, would we, could we do that specifically in the uh, procedure? Will we need to include it in the policy or can we just outline it in the procedure? I, I would recommend it be in the policy itself. Hmm. So um, it, it, it's not required that it be in the policy because it's law. Right. So we have to do, do what certain the law things for the law to do. because the law pre. Right. Yeah. So the so whether you do it in policy is really a decision to make. It if you leave the policy to conform to the law, if the law changes, then your policy is up to date. Right. If you're that specific. Right. The negative to that is, is that, that any time the law change changes, the, right. you have to make sure the policy matches the law. But law always supersedes policy. Right. So that's what I was thinking that if it because the law supersedes our policy, yeah. if we had to include it in the policy, then we would have to change it every time right. the law changes. If we just leave it the way it is, then you it have does to conform to the law. Okay. That's what I thought. Thank you. Any other questions? I have one more, but I'll let you know. One other question in the same report. The school lunch fund, is yeah. there, it can't carry over the, that amount? Based on federal regulation, uh, you're not allowed to have a, a, a fund balance that exceeds three months of the average expenditures for the year. Based on our review, we have identified that the district has a fund balance over the three months of expenditure by approximately $90,000. I believe this, the district might be notified by the school lunch child nutrition program that they should have some sort of a plan in place to bring down the fund balance, but that's federal law. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the, the important pieces to that is that um, the we don't know what the fund balance is going to be until right. the school year is over. And once the school year is over, you can no longer spend what's in the fund balance. So um, those improvements to like the kitchens and things that you're allowed to spend it on it is possible that it's going to go over the allowable until the following budget year when we can actually spend that money so does so that it's, mean that it will always be an issue uh, it is possible that it could always be an it'll issue it'll always right I'm, I'm not I'm not sure I would call it an issue not an issue right that it's, there will always it's, be it's, a, it's an issue of timing right okay. so I mean if the school year gets extended so that we can be hotter longer, then we might be able to get away, you know, and not worry about it. But, but as it stands now, it is possible that it will always go over just because of the nature of the timeline. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Anyone else? Yeah. Sure. So regarding the school lunch, uh, you, you, when you take the total expenditure for, 
expenditures for the year, you divide it by 10 and then times it by three and that's the number. So um, you, 530 something thousand is what you're allowed to retain. So you just went over it you know, by 90. So it's, it's not like it's a drastically over. So, you know, and basically what districts do is they, they'll identify within the school lunch any repairs that need to be done or replacements. And that's usually how they bring down that fund balance. So it's, it's not really, you know, a severe situation. We just have to communicate that to you. It's required. And, and the, the school lunch program will probably identify that too once CSC3 has been processed and they take a look at it. And as far as the other letter with the, the adjusting journal entries that were attached, you know, there was only, I think, seven. You know, a lot of them are just like accrual adjustments. It wasn't like the books weren't close. I mean, we have, I have one district that we had to propose over 60 journal entries. So, you know, so being that there's some journal entries attached doesn't mean everything's, you know, that, that we had to fix things. It, you know, everything was fine, okay? And um, the last report is the extra classroom activity report. And that's basically just the cash flow of, you know, the money that goes into all the student activities and what, came out and what the ending cash balance is, which is reflected in your financial statements in the trust and agency fund. And um, so anyway, so, you know, so the reports have been issued. Um, you just have to acknowledge receipt tonight and accept it as acting audit committee. And um, it's another year of the audit. So I don't know if there's any other questions you may have. Oh, so yes, basically, we just got a clean bill of health. Yes. Okay. Bill of health. Just a translation so everybody could hear that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much for your report. Um, thank you, Mr. Robinson, Ms. Smith, and your team for uh, a clean opinion. I know not getting any material weaknesses and significant deficiencies is not an easy uh, task especially for the size of this district. So I commend you both and your team on a job well done. So thank you. Now you can breathe. It's over, temporarily. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Okay. One second. All right. <clears throat> we don't need to approve anything for that, right? It's just a presentation. Okay, great. So Board of Education accepts the minutes of the Board of Education meetings held on September 11th. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Stu Fishbein, you also have your presentation. You see, we were, we were so happy in that happy place. We just wanted to keep it going. It's a brief presentation, but I do have to give yes, it. Yes, you do have to do it. My apologies. Uh, I'm Stu Fishbein, and I am now starting my 14th year of service to the district. And I just wanted to thank the board and Carol Smith for their support uh, over these many years. I'm now back to being the claims auditor. I've flip-flopped between internal audit and claims auditor over the last few years, and I'm now back to the claims auditor role. Uh, that position is required by New York State education law and the uh, specifics to that job which are included in the plan which is in your materials is pretty well sp uh, spelled out by education law as well. Basically a payment can't be made by the district unless it gets through me. I come in every week and I'm presented with all the payments that the district wants to make for that week and I receive all the support behind that payment and I have to make sure it's a valid business purpose. I have to make sure that there's a purchase order, an, an original invoice, that it's signed off by the receiver of the goods that they've received the goods or services. And if all those things and a few other things are present, I will approve the payment for release. Um, Each month, I also issue a report to the board of the findings for the previous month. Just to close out for the 18-19 school year, Christine Friebel was the claims auditor for last year, and her report was mailed to you today. I have reviewed that report and find it to be in line 
with prior year's findings. There's nothing that needs to be brought to the board's attention, no cause for concern in line with prior years. Uh, she is now the internal auditor and she will, she's finalizing her plan and will present it to you at a future meeting. And that's really all I have to say tonight. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions? This was a great like error rate. I feel like it was even better compared to last year. This is amazing. 1.46%. It, it does demonstrate how good the business office is at processing payments. Right. And just to point out, the number of invoices is up this year. There's been a, a little change in the method of purchasing certain items. The number of invoices is up this year, and it's just something that Carol and Jen are going to have to keep an eye on. Okay. Making sure that it, it's able to be processed in the same good manner that it's been processed over the In the same time new fashion. Because exactly. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Again, thank you all. <laughs> Still in a happy place. That's good. All right, I'm not forgetting anything before I move on. I'm good. All right, Board of Education accepts the minutes of the Board of Education meetings held on September 11th and September 19th, 2019, as detailed in the Friday mailing. Yeah. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second. Second by Mrs. O'Hagan. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries, thank you. Board of Education acknowledges receipt of the Treasurer's Report for August 2019 as detailed in Friday mailing. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second by Mrs. Pools. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Ah. I'll now turn it over to Dr. Cammy. Yep. Good morning. Good morning. Oh my God. Good evening, everybody. First it doesn't work well. No, it just it's too loud otherwise. Um, so first I want to introduce uh, Mr. Jim Glennon, who is our new um, supervisor of security. Um, he started with us about a week and a half, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, um, and we welcome him uh, and his work uh, with us. So welcome, Jim. Um, two very short things. Uh, one is um, important for everybody to know, um, there is a statewide conversation happening about um, graduation requirements and diplomas. Um, Baldwin is at the forefront of that conversation. Um, and um, to just give you a sense of, of what we're doing, um, we're kind of working behind the scenes with the folks at State Ed uh, to make sure that our kids, as they graduate our schools in 2020 and beyond, um, have the opportunity to um, really engage in meaningful learning. Um, and we're also looking at this, this notion of assessment and trying to modernize the way um, we assess. Um, I don't know, um, I know the board has seen the, the op-ed that I had in Newsday. Um, I think the best thing I can say to that is nobody commented negatively. So, like, that's pretty good. Um, but the, there is, um, I've been asked to speak uh, at the New York State Curriculum Committee for all of New York State. Um, I've been asked to speak at a couple of places around um, not only the proposals that have been made, but the work that we're doing here in Baldwin. Um, so it really does set us up as a leader in the state for this conversation. Um, internally, I want to tell everybody that we have been working for about two years now. Um, the thinking started six years ago, but working internally for the last couple of years and very intently this year um, with a couple of groups that we formed inside the district to really reimagine learning for the year 2035. You know, why 2035? Because it gives us enough space between now and then um, to really think big. Uh, so that's going on uh, right now, and um, the work's actually, um, I, I'm impressed by the thinking of the people in our school system of what they believe is possible um, for graduates in the year 2035. 
Um, the last thing that I want to report out, um, it, and this is such outstanding news, um, we have been asked if we would be the um, focus of PBS's uh, Metro Focus. Um, they do, for the last few years, something called American Graduate Day, and they shifted the, the, uh, the focus of American Graduate Day. But they're going to be spending about two and a half days in our school system talking to our kids and looking at the work that we do. Um, and there's going to be a whole segment that's dedicated to Baldwin. Um, it will be on WLIW, it'll be on PBS, it'll be on NJTV. Um, but the product that they come out with is meant for national publication. So. Um, if you haven't watched PBS in a long time, just know that I am going to let you know when it's gone. And I want PBS on every single house in Baldwin. Yep. Um, so that's just what's upcoming. It hasn't happened yet. But um, to be selected for something like that is really um, just amazing news. Um, and so we just keep, we just keep that ball ro rolling, letting everybody know what we're doing here. Um, and that's all I have. Oh, it's only been like three weeks since the last since week. our last meeting. Okay. Comments from the board. I'll start this way. Actually, Mr. Swift. No, thank you. Yep. You have. We went yep. to. Uh, yep. Been out of town. <laughs> we just came from the resolutions dinner. That's really okay. No. Oh. <laughs> You've been back. <laughs> That's right. Last week. <laughs> if you was not. Census. Yes, I'll let you off the hook, as Dr. Yeah, Cameron just told me. <laughs> there was not substantive, I didn't think a lot of substantive conversation, so I really don't. I'm going to document this day. Okay, Ms. Reed? What? Ms. Cools. So part of my job this year is to be a liaison between the school board and the various civic organizations. So I would just like to make sure everybody knows about the Baldwin Community Day that is going to be held on October 19th in conjunction with the library's 100th anniversary. It's really gonna be an amazing day. It's gonna take place in the parking lot back behind the library. Um, many vendors, many different activities, and just a great day for our town. So I hope to see everybody there. Great, thank you. Um, well, a few things to report. See, I'm taking your place. Uh, so I attended the Nassau County Athletic Hall of Fame, um, actually with our athletic director, Ed Ramirez, and one of our, um, well, four of our alumni were honored, but one was actually present. Brianne Nasty, she's the class of 2000. She was inducted um, into the Nassau County Athletic Hall of Fame. She played softball for the high school, so that was pretty cool. Um, she came back from New Hampshire for this award, so it was just great um, seeing alumni there. I also attended the Varsity Girls Volleyball game against Plainview, and they beat them well, so that was great. And I attended the junior varsity football game at Freeport. I do not like football, but I went <laughs> because a student was playing and he begged me to go and ignored me the entire time because he was too cool to say hello. So that was interesting. But we didn't win that game, but it was still great to be there. I think it's actually helpful for Baldwin to go to games that are away because they definitely don't have the support there. So that was a, a good moment. And that's all I have as well to report. It's a smooth evening. All right. So at this time, we can um, go into comments and questions from our audience. Uh, the way it works is we ask you to go to the podium. You have three minutes to um, make your comment or question, and you will direct it to me, your questions or comment to myself. We do not discuss personnel-related items, so um, please refrain from doing so or mentioning any particular names of whether it's students, teachers, administrators, um, to stay away from that. So on that note, anyone want to go up to the podium and ask their question? What is going on? <laughs> I see Baldwin family here. Oh, Mr. Press is here. <laughs> I should have said anything, right, Mrs. Reed? 
Name and address? You made, you made me feel guilty, so <laughs> I didn't want you to feel unloved. Uh, Joel yeah. Press, 1600 Berkeley Avenue, Baldwin. Um, I was hoping the auditors would stay, but I think they knew better and they left. Um, uh, so I haven't seen the report, but it was clearly it was a good one. So congratulations to the business office um, once again um, on that. Uh, I, I had some questions that I about the report not having seen it so I'm just wondering if someone could respond um, just in terms of uh, the end of year kind of fund balance numbers as shown in the report um, where we ended up at the end of the year and what we did with the fund balance and um, things of that nature So the, um, the fund balance at the end of the year was, was at 4%. Just, uh, no. That's the, the unassigned, but I'm talking about the overall. Oh, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. We were able to make some transfers into reserves, uh, and we were able to fund the new reserve uh, that was just established at the May vote. Um, so uh, all things considered, uh, we reduced that overage that was from prior year to the 4% compliance rate after those transfers. Okay. Um, so we're not holding that extra money for the smart schools bond in the fund balance? I know in past years we've had, we've held that money. It, it's not being held in unrestricted. It's not, okay, okay. And it, can you, I mean, how, how much, so we transferred money into the Capital reserve. The the difference was two point six million dollars. Two point six million went into the capital reserve. No, no, um, over seven million went into the two capital reserves. Okay. Uh, one was uh, about four and change, and the other was three point. Uh, I could look up the number; it's right here. But about three point three million dollars went into the new capital reserve. Okay. Excellent. Sounds very very healthy. So. Okay. That was it, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Press. Anyone else? All right, hearing none. We'll continue with the agenda. Okay, Board of Education approves the personal actions report dated October 2nd, 2019 as detailed in the Friday mailing. Moved by Mrs. O'Hagan, second, second by Mrs. Reed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this contains confidential items, therefore it will not be discussed in public. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. That's okay. That's okay. Um, Board of Education approves the recommendations for services of the Committee on Special Education Sub-CSE 504 Committee and the Committee on Preschool Special Education in August and September 2019 as detailed in the Friday mailing. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second. Second by Mr. Smith. Again, this contains confidential items and will not be discussed in public. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Board of Education approves the home tutoring and special education service reports as detailed in the Friday mailing. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second by Mrs. O'Hagan. Again, this will not be discussed in public. Um, those, all those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Just reading this, okay. Board of Education accepts with thanks the donation of 15 trees from Eric Mahler to be planted on the grounds of Milburn School 5, Steel School 5, and Baldwin High School 5, as several trees had been damaged during Hurricane Sandy, as detailed in the Friday mailing. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second, second by Mr. Smith. Um, any questions? Just a thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. As board president, I am calling for consideration of the business items in tonight's agenda as consent items. This includes business items two through 12, um, business agreements, special service contracts, and obsolete items. Are there any items members would care to withdraw from consideration from the consent agenda for further discussion and separate vote? 
Nope. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, including business items two through 12? So moved. moved by Ms. Schools. Second. Second by Mrs. Reed. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. So I have a motion to approve um, items two through 12. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second. Second by Mrs. O'Hagan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> wow, this is a record. Board of Education approves the updated use of facilities report for July 2019 through June 2020 as detailed in the Friday mailing. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second. Second by Mrs. O'Hagan. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> the Board of Education approves the district-wide safety plan as detailed in the Friday mailing. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second by Mr. Smith. Any questions? Well, we didn't have any questions. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Anything under other? I feel like I need to dance because the meeting is over and this is like this a, is record. a record. I feel like I need to do some type of performance. Too, so. yeah, that's true. All of that being said, can I get a motion to adjourn? Well, hold on, hold on. Oh. Are you going to do the important dates? <laughs> oh, yes. I got excited. The important Saturday? dates. Refer to baldwinschools.org for the calendar, the amazing calendar that you can download on your phone and know everything going on. That is the best thing ever. But I'll give you a few highlights. Homecoming this Saturday, October 5th, and halftime show. Beyonce will be performing at 3 o'clock at the high school. See, I told you I got to do something. School's closed Wednesday, October 9th. Um, the Baldwin Civic Association has a meeting on October 10th. Uh, PTA has a sponsored legislative forum on Thursday, October 10th. That's at, also at 8 p.m. at the high school. Uh, school will be closed on October 14th. A lot of other events going on at different uh, schools. Uh, Superintendent's Conference Day. School's closed for students November 5th. And again, I, I'm actually serious about referring to the website. I think it's great and you can download the entire calendar on your phone so you can't miss any event going on anywhere. I think it's great. Yes. Um, as I mentioned, the legislative forum, October 10th, 8 o'clock at the high school, this is an opportunity for you to speak to your legislators. They will be there as, I'm not sure, I'm sure we reached out to everyone. Um, as much as possible, so come out and speak to your senators, assembly women or assembly men. Um, legislators will be there. I think it's very important for you guys to come out and ask those important questions going on in your community. Um, so on that note, so we covered well. that. Anything else? Any reminders? You guys want me to add things up? I, have no no, I just want to make sure we get everything. We in got here. everything done. Anything else? All right. Can I get a motion so to adjourn the meeting at? Latte, Mr. Press, 8.34. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second. Second by Mrs. Cools. <laughs> Motion carries. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. This is definitely a record.